Hey, how's everybody doing? Uh, I know I said that this was originally going to come out in late February, but things have been getting a little weird around these parts, like security guards in front of my Costco weird. The county telling me not to go outside weird. Oh, and also my storage bin had its uh, rent hiked up, so I spent most of the month cleaning that out. And then my coworker got fired, so while I'm not a full-timer, now I am working a whole lot of hours. Or, well, I would be, but my county is currently on quarantine. Whatever, I'm still getting paid. Let's talk about a video game. I said I was gonna do it, so here it is. 1999's LEGO Rock Raiders for the PC. A video game that was never supposed to get a cult following, but it got one anyway, which includes includes an active modding scene and a full-blown remake being done in the Unreal Engine, but more on those later. So what is Rock Raiders? Well, it's a sort of remake of an older LEGO property from the late 90s that was short-lived but existed for long enough to spawn several lore comics and a video game. LEGO was all about their lore comics back before the Star Wars games, and I remember being all about those Bionicles comics. LEGO Rock Raiders, the game, is a fully 3D real-time strategy game where you play as the Rock Raiders, building your base, getting them crystals, and trying Trying not to die as as <laughs> whoops. You know what, screw it, I'm leaving that in. And trying not to die from asphyxiation because your dudes keep on getting spooked by bats. You know, just fun activities for children. This game also had its full-blown tech tree, multi-step objectives, and micro, uh, sorta. You can still play this today provided you didn't do anything crazy to your operating system and you still have a copy in workable condition. Rock Raiders is surprisingly agreeable on modern Windows systems and only crashes occasionally, which is pretty good considering some games that were made more recently. The real question is, should you play it if you have the means? Are there alternatives? What's this game even like? Well, this video is not going to be entertaining if we don't go into the pros and cons of a promotional video game meant to sell more Legos, which ultimately didn't do its job very well. So let's just get on with it. This intro is nearly three minutes long. Very likely the first thing you're gonna notice is the menu and the UI. This is pretty nice for a late 90s tie-in video game. The menus are fully animated, the cinematics look pretty good, and for the most part, it's pretty easy to get around all the not level areas of this game. The in-game UI has a lot of stuff going on between the alerts you get, your build menus, how much stuff you have at any given time, and you can also manage your AI's priorities, which allows you to set what you want your Rock Raiders to do when they haven't been given a specific task. There's no real idling for units in Rock Raiders. They do sometimes get tuckered out and need to have a little snacky snack, and there are some other things we'll get into later in the video, but if a Rock Raider doesn't have a given task to do, it's gonna go find something to do. You have a say in what your Rock Raiders do when there aren't any immediate directives being given, so you can have them prioritize shoveling gravel, collecting energy crystals, drilling for ore, all that good stuff when there isn't anything you want them to specifically do. So what are we doing here? Why are we here? Where is here? Well, in the lore of LEGO Rock Raiders, the Brick Boys aboard the spaceship the LMS Explorer just got back from a trip where they mapped the entire galaxy in a massive flex on the Star Wars, Warhammer, and Mass Effect universes. However, they flexed a little too hard and got knocked into a wormhole that plopped them into an entirely new galaxy. Lucky for them, a nearby planet has a source of energy that should be able to get their stuff working and get them back to their own world. This is explained a bit in the cinematics and more so in the comics, but you can just take my word for it. They go down to the planet to get some of the crystals, and it turns out there's monsters down there that don't appreciate the Lego men taking their stuff. Good thing this exploratory vessel has a crap load of guns. Also, you can teleport just about anything you could possibly need short of complex structures straight through the surface of the planet into the mines. So what do you do in LEGO Rock Raiders? Drill stuff, get ore and energy crystals, build stuff that lets you drill more stuff so you can build bigger stuff, and most objectives will revolve around you getting a set number of energy crystals. However, Building things and keeping your base powered will require the expenditure of those energy crystals. So why build a base then? 
because you'll need to build a building halfway up the tech tree called the support station if you don't want to lose a mission to running out of oxygen. There is a supply system in this game that governs units, and then there's oxygen. You can teleport down up to 10 rock raiders with your starting tool store, but you don't necessarily want to do that right off the bat, because each rock raider will take up some of your limited oxygen supply. The more guys you have down there, the faster you use it up. For every support station you build, you get enough oxygen or CO2 scrubbers, whatever they're doing, to keep 10 rock raiders from sucking wind. And you also get your supply cap increased by 10 rock raiders, which you won't be producing enough air for if you bring them all down, necessitating another support station. I don't think there's an upper limit on how many rock raiders you can have down provided you have enough support stations, so things can get really out of hand here. Support stations will also let you train your Lego people for specialized roles such as driver, pilot, guy who blows things up, and there's other buildings that do other things for your base such as a refinery to turn all your ore into Lego studs which are much faster for building, a geology center for knowing where to drill to get all the good stuff, and a few other pointless buildings that you'll need to get to the top of the tech tree if you want to build the really good stuff. Remember though, your main objective is almost always going to be to collect a set amount of energy crystals, and the more things you build that aren't necessary to what you need to do, the longer that's going to take. So what's exactly stopping you from getting them crystals? Well, there's rock monsters which come in three flavors. Normal, Ice, and Lava Monsters. The first two get one-shotted by the laser beam that you can equip on all of your guys, and the third may as well be a one-shot because the Freezer Beam, which you use exclusively to get rid of Lava Monsters, encases whatever it hits into a block of ice, effectively stun-locking them. Then there's Swarms of Bats, which will spook your Rock Raiders into dropping whatever they were doing and cowering. This would be fine, except that in the normal version of the game, there is no way to get rid of bats, so if some of them decide to hang out in front of your tool store, and they don't already have an oxygen supply going, you may as well restart the mission. But more on janky stuff in a sec. Lastly, there's slimy slugs, who are nearly bulletproof and will literally suck your hard-earned energy crystals right out of your buildings. The strategy given by the games to use sonic blaster mines are literally useless, so you'll have to make do with pusher beams, a type of laser that deals low damage but gives a lot of knockback, preventing them from getting to your buildings. Now, let's get into the real enemy of this game bad programming and poor design choices. There is effectively no mini-map in LEGO Rock Raiders. You can pull a radar screen up that gives you a loose idea of what's going on in your immediate area, but you can't use it to easily move around the full game map, and it's not very accurate, I find. Your only means of navigating the tunnels is edge scrolling and using the arrow keys to pan and tilt the camera so you can kind of see what walls you're drilling. You're not gonna have it too hard early in the game because maps are really small, but as maps start getting bigger and bigger, you're going to have a very hard time keeping track of everything. While there is a button on the UI to snap to your buildings, that doesn't help you get back to where you were in the caverns where you were trying to drill, especially if you have a long advanced tunnel going on. There is also no real way to keep track of your rock raiders or how many of them you have aside from the occasional notification that one of them has died, which you can snap to, or if you have too many of them, you can tell because you're oxygen meter is draining despite you having a support station. This makes it important to memorize the layout of your tunnels and be very careful of which priorities you have your AIs take because of the AIs mannerisms. You're gonna be screwed if you lose track of your guys. And if the map management is bad, the notification system is worse. A landslide has occurred. 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 The game seems to be hard coded to notify you of every occurrence that happens that they feel they need to tell you about. That means that at times, you will be continuously notified about rock slides, slimy slugs emerging and then retreating, and energy crystals being found that you've already collected. There's little point in snapping to these notifications as by the time you're there, the event will already be over with unless you're catching it as it's happening. There's other stuff that the game will tell you about that you might want to see, like say, finding new ore seams or new caverns opening up, but they won't let you snap to those events. This ends up being a point of annoyance where you'll go and 
drill every wall you can and reinforce all the walls you can't just to make the rock slide notification stop. Once there's finally some silence, you can focus on apparently how a cavern has opened up that has all the energy crystals you need to finish the mission, but they won't let you snap to it so you can tell your boys to drill there. The biggest jank, and also the greatest enemy in the game, is the friendly AI. The Rock Raiders are the dumbest, most nonsensical, most useless sods ever to be controlled in a game. I think it might be that the task ordering is just a little too complicated for a late 90s engine, but Rock Raiders will get confused, they'll do nothing from having too many tasks queued up and further confusing them, and often they will neglect tasks you've put a high priority on. They'll keep milling about while the one thing you need them to do, like, uh, repairing a piece of ground that's being damaged by lava, and they'll literally just walk over the lava and die while the rest of them get cut off from the source of energy crystals you need to finish the level. From about mid-game on, most of the levels will require an elaborate amount of cheesing to successfully accomplish the task at hand. The AI also will program Rock Raiders to do a task until it's no longer possible for them to do. This means that no matter what else there is to do on the map, Rock Raiders will say keep collecting ore or shoveling rubble until they there's literally none left on the accessible map. This is an especially big problem when you factor in rock slides, which not only damage your rock raiders, but add more rubble so that your guys will be compelled to shovel it up. And it just keeps going and going until you figure out the way to get around this. Firstly, your best bet is to avoid your rock raiders picking up every ore on the map until they run out is to play with priorities. Not only can you reorder your priorities, but you can outright turn things off. So say once you get to a certain amount of ore and you've built everything you need to build, turn off the priority to collect ore. Only do it after you've built everything you need to build because for some reason, turning off collecting ore also means that rock raiders will not go to your tool store to collect stored ore so that they can finish building things. Luckily though, disabling other tasks such as shoveling gravel or drilling walls is much more straightforward. Also, I think refined studs don't count as ore, so it might still work, but I think we're getting a little too deep into this rabbit hole and that's somebody else's shtick. One thing you can do if all your raiders are chasing AI butterflies is that you can assume direct control. You can first person or over the shoulder control any rock raider you've brought down or any vehicle that is currently being piloted. You can drill walls when directly controlling a rock raider on foot, and you can get through a small cavern's worth of walls faster than nine rock raiders that you've teleported down, and you've got a one-track mine so you won't get distracted. If you have a small digger, an early game vehicle, you can pretty much drill out the entire map in a fraction of the time, and then just turn off drilling for all your other rock raiders and put them on collection duty. There's a lot more AI jank we can get into here, such as how when you call for action stations to fight something, your rock raiders will stop to take aim and fire well out of the effective range of their weapons, miss, then run up some more to just outside the effective range before firing and missing again, but by the time they move up a third time, the rock monsters have wandered off and now they're well out of range, so you have to creatively move them around so that they can actually shoot the things. Also, sometimes building you've commanded to be built simply won't get finished because rock raiders assigns each individual raider to bring a certain piece of materials and if one of the raiders gets distracted, it just never gets done. Almost all the walkthroughs I read to get through this game will eventually encourage some heavy cheesing strategies in order to make it through later levels. And I think one of these might have been made by one of the developers because there's references to changes being made in playtesting and how they couldn't get around certain programming issues so things are like the way they are for that reason. I think this guide has some sort of inside knowledge, which is pretty neat. Okay, so this particular bit about bad AI has officially now gone on for about two pages, which has inflated the entire bug section of four, so let's just move on to the next part of the video. Okay, time for our anti-sponsor segment. This is the part where I tell you about a crappy or otherwise extremely questionable sponsorship offer that I have rejected thanks to the fan funding I receive from patreon.com slash charlatanwonder. No, we're not talking about that game, because while I do get a fair amount of offers from them, I personally feel like it's too easy and practically cheating for this segment. But maybe I'll make a compilation of offers once I have like a hundred or something. This anti-sponsor is likely an MLM scheme or something like that, but I gotta be honest, I can't make out much from this pitch email because 
because it's buzzword soup. I personally wouldn't be surprised if there are channels that take up these kind of deals because while they tend not to pay cash, there's a dirty dollar to be made by exploiting parasocial relationships, which gives me the chills personally. The real thing that made me throw this in the trash and then fish it out when I started this segment is the body of the email and the context around it. It's insane. I'm gonna read some of this to you right now. Okay, let me find a part that doesn't like say, uh, we are looking for YouTubers to participate in our social media challenge. After searching for about a month and narrowing down my choices, I decided to reach out for you to the opportunity, blah, blah, blah. Our social media company and broadcast have long sought out ways to better be able to monetize and or create merchandising for online affiliated marketing. Like you, we found it typical. We are now partnered with an amazing third party company and contains quite a few products that make a larger portion of a billion dollar industry. Plus these products are easy for social media entrepreneur to sell and deliver. Our partner company sends the products on your behalf and collects the funds, which can be later placed into a bank account of your choice. I'm reading this verbatim, by the way, this thing like why even though it's an unsolicited email, I'm not going to show it to uh, avoid any sort of nasty grams. Uh, this thing is not proofread very well. The thing is, these products haven't hit social media avenue as of yet, explanation point. Because of that reason, we are hosting this campaign no strings attached. We are simply looking for results and we are expecting this to skyrocket sales through the roof. During your challenge, you have no risk and we will work to help you build an income stream. All right, how do we get paid? We'll negotiate a percentage we can give back to the results of your challenge. Again, with this campaign, you will have zero risk. We will supply you with products and every sale made will be through the company. So, okay, I'm, I'm done trying to like pick out because the craziest bits have their name in it. So I can't really say it, but I think this is some sort of weird love child between affiliate marketing and drop shipping, both of which are very questionable business practices. And oh my God, this thing, I Googled their company and there's only three pages worth of results. Like two of which are basically their website. And then like, oh, the wackiness continues. Like they have a one hour podcast where it's just three of them awkwardly staring like dead into the camera. And I think cause when did I get this? I think I got this almost a year, uh, almost a year ago I got this. And I think whatever they're doing, it must have petered out by now because I haven't had any follow-ups from them. Like there's some other game companies that are constantly trying to follow up with me even after I tell them, please do not. So yeah, this, this is what decent YouTubers are shielding you from. Please be thankful that we're not all as scummy as the mainstreamers. And that's why I have a Patreon. You can help me keep this channel clean of terrible sponsorships like this and certain mobile games by pledging any amount to patreon.com slash charlatanwonder. Even a dollar helps and you're free to say no. It's cool. This channel is still going to make videos just fine, but I do appreciate it. Now. Back to our feature presentation. Lego Rock Raiders is one of those games that doesn't get a lot of coverage. It's from that era of Lego games from the mid to late 90s before they realized that a certain formula basically prints them money and only made licensed games using that said formula. Most of the coverage for these 90s Lego games goes to Lego Islands 1 and 2 or Lego Racers, which are all good games, but I'm an RTS guy. Speaking of RTS games, this is one of the only children's real-time strategy games that I can think of. Most are implicitly for adults, even if they don't have anything that would prevent them from getting an E for everyone rating. And that one walkthrough I was talking about earlier that might have been from a developer mentioned a few times that levels were heavily reworked because they needed to be made something that a child could plausibly beat. Doubling down the whole idea that this is an RTS for kids, making Rock Raider something of a rare breed. What's even more surprising to me is that this game has an active community community even today. There's an active forum, there's speedruns, and a good deal of modding for a game that's over 20 years old and is a tie-in product for a line of toys. This is probably to do with the fact that when you go into the game files, you'll find that LEGO Rock Raiders is compiled in WAD files. Yes, those WADs, like the original Doom, like where's all the data? While I don't know much about modding, I know that WAD files reputations for being extremely easy to work with and modify, so that would make for some fun modding for this game. The main mod for Rock Raiders is called Baz's Mod, 
which not only reworks a lot of sore spots like damage balance, making slimy slugs something you can kill, and making rock monsters not something that get one-shotted, redoing the level layouts and objective requirements, and even adding 10 new levels to the game that are an adult-sized challenge without the AI jank, you know? There's other mod packs that add new biomes to the game or outright turn off Bat's ability to scare you entirely so they stop causing you to slowly, painfully lose a level. But if you happen to have an old copy of Rock Raider sitting around, I'd suggest doing Baz's mod as it's a much better experience in the base game. For the rest of you, well, LEGO Rock Raiders is presently what's called Abandonware as it's not available by any means of retail anymore. And while it is a protected copyright of the LEGO company, they don't seem to be protecting it. I'm not going to recommend that you go find and download it though, because I need to see why A. But I really, really wish that LEGO would find someone to remaster or at least re-release their classic games so people that would have a legitimate want to play these have a legitimate way to buy them. Say, if their old disc is too scratched up to get it installed on their new computer. In the meantime, for the rest of us, however, there's Manic Miners. Manic Miners is a full-blown remake of LEGO Rock Raiders in the Unreal Engine, currently being done by a person that goes by Baraclava. According to the dev blog, it's just them working on it, but so far, some of the major mechanics have already gotten down and judging by my clips and screenshots there's already a massive improvement because there is a UI tool that lets you see how many rock raiders you have. I've got high hopes for this project and I look forward to seeing it come to completion. Now there's something we can all do right now to help this along. Aside from Baraclava, actively uh, soliciting collaborators of the competent sort to help with things, he or she also needs a larger sample size of PC specifications to get a feel for optimization and other hardware specific things. I'll leave a link to the download in the description where we can all go download Manic Miners, give it a try, and more importantly give Baraclava feedback about frame rates and our PC specs. We can do something positive for once and try to make up for all that Bioshock Infinite trash talk. Alright, let's wrap this up because I got more videos to make with my downtime. LEGO Rock Raiders was a nice nostalgia trip, but the issues with the AI and quality of life mechanics make it just out of reach of being something that a newcomer would enjoy, having no experience with the game in their childhood. Baz's mod makes things a lot better, and Manic Miners looks promising, but that's a one-person project that currently needs all the help it can get right now. I'd say maybe give the game a replay if you already have it hidden in an old CD case somewhere, and that might be worth a replay, especially if you download the Baz's mod, but if you don't and you like the idea of what Rock Raiders looks like, then Manic Miners deserves your attention. In the near future, we've got a video that's going to kick a hornet's nest, a video about Warzone 2100, a cult classic RTS that is open source for all, and now on Steam, and maybe something else too, depending on how much I get done during this quarantine. Special thanks to my $10 patrons, which are presently Zizavan, Alissanera, McFluffers, and French Toast. And remember that you too can help me stay away from terrible sponsorship offers by committing to the Patreon. In the meantime, try to stay safe out there, enjoy the cat video, and please, for the love of God, wash your hands. Frisk here has gotten just a bit too chunky to sit on the windowsill. So now when he wants to spy on birds, he just, he sits like this so that he can like have his butt on the uh, cat tree. Are there even any birds out? Oh, you're sniffing the camera. Are there even any good birds out there? What are you staring at? What's out here? I see no birds or neighbor cats. What is it you seek? I touched the chunk. But seriously, what are you looking at out here? <laughs>